lovelies, it is Tori and today I'm starting off my reading vlog for North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. I am buddy reading this with Connor Stompanato for the first two weeks of August. I am so excited to pick this up. This will be my third Elizabeth Gaskell that I've read and I've absolutely adored what I've read from her so far and I've heard great things about this one. This follows a woman who I believe lives in the South of England. However, she ends up having to move to the North of England due to something changing I think in her father's circumstances. And there she meets a factory owner who is very attractive, I believe, but they also have very different ideas of what life should be like. There's also a lot of discussion of industrialization and the, how it affects different social classes. And I've just heard, like I said, great things about it. I'm so excited to pick it up. We're going to be reading about four chapters a day. So I will be starting off with the first four chapters today. I'm kind of going to be going back and forth between audiobook and physically reading this one, which I don't usually do. Usually I just stick to one or the other. However, the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be kind of balancing three jobs. I mean, one of the jobs is pretty flexible and I can just work a couple hours there during the week. So it's not like super insanely taking over my whole life, but it is going to be a lot busier than I'm used to and just a lot of chaos going on. The reason why I'm balancing three jobs is because I am working out my final two weeks in one job, but I did just get hired for another and I offered to get started right away just with only a very specific schedule, a very limited schedule. So I'm doing that. And then the other job, the third job I have, like I said, is very flexible. It's working for my dad and it's just kind of helping him out. So it's pretty easy if I like don't get as much done during the week, like it's not going to impact the productivity of my dad's office that much. It's just kind of that extra help. So, I mean, it won't be like so much that like, I can't get away, for example, with skipping even a week working for my dad if I need to, which I may do for at least one of the weeks. But anyway, all that to say, I'm having a lot going on right now. I'm actually planning on not filming any videos. I have some already like pre-filmed, luckily, um, that I'll be able to get up. And plus this I'll just kind of be doing throughout the couple of weeks. So yeah, so I'm probably not going to be filming very much, doing much booktube, at least not as much as I usually have been doing over the summer. And mostly that's because any free time I have this week, I would like as much as possible to be able to read and possibly watch things just to, you know, decompress after the chaos that will be every single day. So anyway, that was a huge ramble, but I'm so excited to read North and South and I will take you along with me and give you my live thoughts as they come to me. Hey guys, so I am going into work in the next few minutes, but I thought I would really quickly give you a little update on my thoughts on North and South. I have read eight chapters of it so far and I'm really liking it. I really like Margaret as a main character. She's very interesting because you can tell she's a very good person and a very caring person, but she also has a bit of pride and vanity that you can kind of see in her. I don't know, other people may disagree with me, but just in their discussion of certain things, um, you can tell there's a little bit of pridefulness within her as far as like, I mean like her reaction about the wallpaper in their new house and then the just her treatment of Mr. Thornton so far has been pretty um, judgmental, quick to judge. So it's been really interesting, but also she's not like irritatingly vain or prideful. She's like, you can understand where she's coming from when she makes certain comments and you can tell she does have a caring nature. Like she really cares about the people around her. Um, she cares about her family regardless of what she thinks of their decisions and it's really interesting to read about. I also just love Elizabeth Gaskell's writing. It's like Jane Austen but a little bit easier to understand and I feel like she is more willing to, I don't know, I guess part of it is just the way novels were written when Elizabeth Gaskell was around versus when Jane Austen was writing because you can see she's much better at describing more in depth the characters and really taking time to develop them in a more direct way. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like with Jane Austen, you kind of have to use your imagination a little bit more. Um, whereas Elizabeth Gaskell, I feel like does a really good job of developing them in a way where you're still using your imagination, obviously, but you're able to get a better grasp of what her meaning is, I think. 
Um, and again, that may just be the writing style of the time and that's why, but I do, I just really like Elizabeth Gaskell. Connor seems to be liking it so far as well. Last time I talked to him, he had only read three chapters yesterday instead of four because he was pretty tired, which is totally understandable. So hopefully we'll both continue to like it. Um, I think that's all I have to say right now since I am only like 80 pages in, which is quite a bit, but at the same time, like, it is almost 500 page book, so at least my copy is. So 80 pages is not even a fifth of it that I've read yet. So anyway, but I am really liking it, excited to see how it goes. I also love that Elizabeth Gaskell is once again addressing the idea of um, Methodist preachers and Methodist believers. She does that in Ruth as well. Um, and I find it really interesting to see her approach to it. Um, I really want to find out more about her life because I'd be very curious to see, yeah, just some of those recurring themes and ideas that are shared in her books, how they connect back to her personal life. Because usually with authors, um, obviously you don't want to read too much into their works to assume things about their lives that aren't true. But you can tell if there's recurring themes or recurring um, ideas that are being explored in their books that it probably means something to them. And so it's always interesting to see why it might be that that particular theme or idea grasps their attention so much and why they're so willing to write about it so often. So anyway, excited to continue to read it. I will let you know in the next day or two what my thoughts are as I continue to read. Hey guys, so it's been a few days since I updated you. Unfortunately, I've just been really, really busy and exhausted so I just haven't found the time to film at all but I have been reading North and South keeping up on it and I'm really really enjoying it I love love Margaret as a main character she's so sassy and yet has such a good heart you can tell she has a lot of vanity and pride particularly towards the beginning of the book however as the book goes on you're able to see her embrace the northern culture a little bit more and recognize that even though it's different it's not necessarily bad it's just a new way of looking at things a new way of living life and she's starting to really appreciate the good aspects of that. I also find the plot really interesting. There's a lot of aspects to the plot that I was not expecting and so it's been a lot of fun, just a lot more drama and interesting like discussions of not just like classes but also criminal justice especially within um, government positions or army positions military positions of the time and it's really really intriguing i also of course still love elizabeth gaskell's writing style it's so wonderful and yeah i'm just absolutely enjoying it i am listening to it a lot on audiobook although i have found some time to read it physically too unfortunately connor decided he was going to have to dna it pretty early on he's just very busy right now and not able to keep up on this and it's not really gripping him at least not as quickly as he would have preferred so he decided to put it aside and hopefully he'll be able to get to it soon and we can chat a little bit about it then but I'm really enjoying it and yeah definitely a great read so far I will try my hardest this next week it's the beginning of the second week of me reading this so I will try my hardest to make sure I'm updating you more regularly as we get into more intense portions and share like more direct thoughts about it without being spoilery of course but anyway I will try my best to do that I am still kind of working three jobs this week it's my last week doing that before I finish one of them off and I'm just focusing on the other two again which will be really great but anyway I did just want to really quickly give you an update that I'm still loving it in fact I would be very surprised if I don't ever end up giving this a five stars it's just so good and the characters are so interesting their dynamics and again a lot of the issues that it's discussing are discussing not discussing are really fascinating to me so yes absolutely loving it and i will check in with you later hey guys so i apologize if you hear any yard work going on outside the motors of whatever they're using i don't think it's a lawnmower i think it's something else but anyway they're doing something in my apartment complex. So yeah, but I did really want to come on here. I wanted to come on here last night. It is Wednesday the, I don't know what the date is, but anyway, the second week in August. And last night I was listening to the audiobook for North and South and I reached a point where I was really upset because something happened 
that just made me so sad. And I was literally driving, like I was parking in my apartment complex when I got to this chapter where something really sad happens. And I was literally just like, no, 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 in my car. So um, yeah, that happened and I'm really upset. I'm not going to say what happened because I don't want to spoil anything, but let's just say it's chapter, what chapter is it, 41? Yeah. 41, The Journey's End, which just alone sounds really kind of melancholy. So anyway, if you've read it, you might know what that chapter is, and maybe you don't, but you can go back and look at your copy and find out what I'm talking about. But I'm really heartbroken, and I'm just very curious to see how the rest of this book goes, because I have no idea where it's going to go. I don't know how these two people who clearly care so much about each other but because of social conventions of the day they can't talk to each other openly in any way shape or form not even because of the social standards of the day but also because of secrets that at least one of them is keeping margaret is keeping that are important secrets to keep because they're about her family it's not just for her it's for her family and it's kind of other people's secrets and so she can't tell him but they both care about each other and she can't explain herself and it's just so much angst and i love it i honestly i was going back and forth on this for this whole book but i think i might prefer this over wives and daughters which is so shocking to me i thought wives and daughters was gonna be my favorite Gaskell, but I I think I like this better. I think I like the characters in general better. I will say I still love Wives and Daughters, like absolutely, and maybe depending on my mood even, Wives and Daughters might take the cake. But I do feel like Wives and Daughters is maybe a little bit more of a tame, like Jane Austen-esque story, where there's not quite as much heartbreak and pain on page at least in that one and I just like my drama I like my heartbreak and pain and I feel like that's very much in this book this has a lot more drama um, has a lot more sad things has a lot more yeah intense things going on compared to wives and daughters that being said I mean wives and daughters definitely has things in it that are pretty dramatic but it's not on the same level as this I don't think and I, I also feel like this is dealing with social issues that I really have a lot of interest in even today um, and I really like it because I feel like it's very poignant for even today's issues like I feel like a lot of the issues brought up in this obviously are within the context of a more Victorian society but there's still issues that we're dealing with today and discussing today and I really, really like that. I really like how applicable this still is in many ways. Things like social classes and how like businesses, what are businessmen's roles within the lives of their employees and what makes for good business while also being a caring person, you know, because you can't, business is a complicated thing in many ways and yet we still want to provide good living opportunities for everybody, for people who maybe are on lower social, on a lower social um, level. But at the same time, like businesses still need to be run because if they're not run, then nobody gets a job at all. <laughs> and that's gonna be a problem too. And so it's a lot of complicated arguments and things going on and then like debates about, yeah, the criminal justice system and government like military policies and things like that that I feel like are still issues today all around the world, I'm sure. And it's just, yeah, it's really, really interesting. I'm really, really enjoying it. And again, love the characters. I find them very intriguing and it's just, it's so good. Definitely already a favorite of the year and I doubt the rest is going to disappoint me and very curious to see how the rest goes. So really, really absolutely loving this book. So up my alley. I remember feeling just this excited for Wives and Daughters as well last year, but I do, like thinking back to Wives and Daughters and the plot and everything and the characters, 
I do think I like this slightly more, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty slight, like it's winning by a slight margin because I love them both, but it's going so well. Not only is that breaking my heart, but also I, I know this vlog is not about this, but I wanted to mention that I am continuing the, with The Sun and Splendor by Sharon K. Penman, and I actually am wanting to finish both this and North and South by the end of this week, if possible, which I only have a little over 100 pages left of this, so I think it's very possible. I'm mostly at this point just listening to North and South on audiobook. The audio I found was is really, really good. I'm really liking it, and it's just easier with how busy I've been. If I want to finish both of these, it's easier for me to listen to this on audiobook get through it especially because my commute is not terribly long but long enough that I can get a good chunk of this listened to every day and then the Sun and Splendor I am just physically reading every chance I get and so yeah like I said I have a little over 100 pages left and this one's also breaking my heart I knew it would in fact there were I was at the page I think I had like a little over 200 pages left um, and I was at that point for like a couple weeks because, and I was not reading it, not because I didn't have time, but because I knew what was ha going to happen. I knew all the bad things that were coming because I know the history of Richard the Third, and I knew it was coming. I think I may have mentioned this already in this vlog, but anyway, I, I just knew what was gonna happen and I've never felt this way, but I like did not wanna read it and not because I didn't like it. It was because I just knew what was gonna happen and I was not ready for it. Like, it's one thing to reread a book and know that it ends sadly with like people dying or whatever, but to also know that like, not only are pe certain people gonna die, but, there's going to be a lot of damaged reputations, unfairly damaged reputations, at least within the context of this version of the story. And so it's like, not only are these characters you love going to die, but also there's going to be a lot of, like, you know that things are going to happen where their reputation, even though they're such a good person, you know that their reputation is going to be tarnished to the point where it would be centuries before anybody even re-looked at them. Um, as potentially a better person than they were made out to be and so it's not just death it's like death of who they are like they're going to be forgotten and that's just so hard to read about especially when you come to care for these characters like I have with these characters with Richard especially um, I really love how Sharon K Penman not only brought Richard to life in this but also the whole Wars of the Roses. It's just amazing. Like this whole book, it's one that jumps perspectives from like pretty much every character in this book has at least a chapter or two where it's from their perspective. And so they're all brought to life so well. They're all so nuanced. They all have their weaknesses and strengths and you're able, even the people you kind of hate, you're able to have moments of being able to pity them and recognize how hard this time really was. The Wars of the Roses is such a complicated and personal thing. Like I think that's what part of what makes it so interesting was it's not just like two sides fighting each other because you know like for example England and France it's not England and France fighting each other because they both believe that they sh deserve to have this land and they're fighting over this land within France usually. <laughs> Instead it's people who at first it's about getting the kingship but things happen where it becomes so much more personal. There's so much more, so many more personal aspects to this where, you know, people are not just fighting sides. It's like they're fighting each other individually. Like the Woodvilles, individual Woodvilles fighting individual Yorkists and individual Yorkists fighting individual Lancastrians. Like it's all so much more complex than just fighting for the crown. There's so much going on. And even the damaged reputations, it's all manipulation and tricking and just like rumors and things that are impacting everybody so personally. And so it's not just about a kingdom, it's about people. And that's not always how wars feel. I mean, really all wars can end up feeling personal, but usually like, you know, it's one side against another. Usually it's not necessarily personal things between those sides. It's more just general like beliefs and ideas and thoughts about things, how should things should be, and they're clashing. And so they end up physically fighting. Whereas, like I said, with this, there's a lot of players 
and a lot of figures that are personally interacting and personally have grudges against each other. And yet Sharon K. Penman does a great job of making you be able to see everybody's side a little bit better. And it's just, it's so good. It's amazing. I absolutely am loving both of these books. Definitely two favorites of the year. And hopefully in the next couple of days, I will finish them both. But yes, I just wanted to come on here and say I had a very strong emotional reaction to North and South last night and so I wanted to make sure I mentioned it. I was gonna film last night but my roommates were home and I didn't want to bother them um, especially because I was getting back not late late from work but like it was like nine o'clock so it was kind of like that time where you're trying to settle down so I didn't want to bother anybody but all that being said both doing great. North and South amazing. We're focusing more on North and South. North and South is great and I will update you as soon as I have more to talk about. Hey guys, so it is actually the next day and I surprised myself by finishing North and South today. I absolutely adored this book, as I said in my last clip, and the ending did continue to be fabulous. This book also was just very sad. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so sad because I feel like I've heard a lot of people, like, they compare it to Pride and Prejudice. And when I think of Pride and Prejudice, I think of a pretty lighthearted, a uh, sweet story that has a lot of depth to it for sure but it just is a little more lighthearted and sweet whereas this I felt like it really went there went to pretty dark places without totally diving in and I think that's what I'm finding I love about Elizabeth Gaskell is she combines the sweetness of Jane Austen and that sweet writing style with a little bit more, I don't know if I would say Hardy or Dickens, but as far as like other authors who maybe go to darker places in their stories, you know, tend to write more dramatic plots, tend to go to darker places in their stories. And I feel like Elizabeth G Gaskell, like I said, has a lot of that while also maintaining that Jane Austen-esque feel. And I just absolutely love it. I have officially decided that Elizabeth Gaskell is one of my favorite authors. I have loved all the things I've read from her so far. I've read Wives and Daughters and Ruth before this one and enjoyed both of those and now reading this I just I can absolutely say I absolutely love her. I think as of right now this is my favorite of the three that I've read by her. Wives and Daughters is pretty close but I do think I prefer this honestly. Um, my one complaint is I wish that the ending had been drawn out a little bit more. Like I almost wish that there had been at least one more chapter where we could have gotten a little bit more of a wrap on the characters and their lives and not necessarily like tell me the rest of their life story but you know like at least being able to see the development of the relationship a little bit more post declarations of love as well as just being able to see a little bit more the reactions of some of the side characters I would have liked to see Mr. Thornton's mother and Margaret have a little bit more of a reconciliatory ending. I would have been interested in seeing the development of that relationship and there's a few other characters I would have liked to see a little bit more after the last chapter. So I was a little disappointed with that, I'm not going to lie, but I still really enjoyed it. I found it to be a beautiful, wonderful story. Elizabeth Gaskell's writing is just wonderful. I love the issues she brings up in this book and it made me think a lot, which I really appreciated. And it was just great. It was wonderful. And I would highly recommend it if you have not read it yet. It really is so good. I did not think I was going to like this more than Wives and Daughters. I went into this expecting this to be like really good, but I didn't expect it to be on the same level as Wives and Daughters, but it surpassed it for me. So definitely, absolutely, absolutely adore this. In fact, I think I want to get a, another copy because this is a very cheaply made copy. It's cool because it's made entirely out of recycled paper, which is great for the environment, but it also made for pretty easily falling apart pages. I mean, I my mom read this before me, but that was it. And the back pages are all falling out already and some of the front pages as well. So anyway, probably we'll get a new copy at some point. Suffice it to say, it was so good. Absolutely adore it highly recommend and I'm glad that in this vlog I was able to read something I absolutely loved because I feel like the past couple that I have done where I've read single books throughout the vlog 
um, I have ended up not really loving, I think, because I think I did Great Gatsby, which I DNF'd, and then I think I did Persuasion, which I really liked, but didn't, like, love necessarily, so absolutely loved this. This was definitely five stars. And that wraps everything up. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below if you've read North and South, your thoughts on it. If you've read any Elizabeth Gaskell and your thoughts on her, if you want to read North and South, just let me know all the things. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you would like to, and I will see you next time. Bye!